name's Bane. You know nothing about podcasts. I was brought up in them, thrived them. I was already a podcast before you were a man. Is that the quote? I can't remember. Probably. Sounds about right. Piss off, ghost. <laughs> Welcome back to Wood John Rather. It's that magical time of the year. It's Spooky People Week. Ooh. Ah. Um, to get us in the spirit of things, I have a little story before we've been about my tiny black cat. Is he your familiar? I, I asked you that and you actually didn't answer me. Yeah, I am quite familiar with him. But so he's he's had a bit of an upset belly for quite a while. So my partner's mother has taken him to the vets on numerous occasions for us. We've given him medicine. We've had blood tests. They couldn't listen to his heart or breathing because he was purring far too loudly for them to be able to hear anything. But all of the tests have come back conclusive that, in fact, he's just a greedy little shit. That's 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 it. He's not got an allergy, not got worms, got a virus or any sort of disease. He's just just a greedy little shit. So that solved all my health problems. Thank you, Matt, for sharing. (laughs) It's nice to spot symptoms in others. It, it shouldn't have cost us hundreds of pounds to figure out that he's just a greedy little... He growls at his food because he's the runt of the litter. So he's worried that people are going to try and steal it. And Lauren's dad bought us like a treat tree, which I wasn't sure what that meant. I thought it was like going to be like a Christmas tree where you hang chocolates off it. But it's basically like Kaplunk, but with cat biscuits. And they're supposed to put their paws in and like knock them down from the inside until they get to the bottom and then they can eat them. But... One of them is that learned that he can just walk into it and it does the same <laughs> trick. <laughs> we've, we've had it a day. So, yeah, so that's that's my mood setting about Little Black Cats, my familiar. OK, <clears throat> well, I believe it's my turn to ask questions this week. And as it is spooky season, I'd like to kick it off with something uh, around the region of would you rather drink blood or eat flesh? Eat flesh. Because hungry, not thirsty. Hun- hungry right now. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I think you can survive a matter of probably probably weeks without food, but only a matter of days without water. It's not water; it's blood. Yeah, but there's got to be water in blood, right? Are you gonna water it down? Just like a drop, just a drop, like in like a nice scotch that releases the flavour. So we we are mostly water, aren't we? We're something like eighty eighty nine percent water. So I reckon there's you... water. I reckon there's some water in your blood. Possibly. I don't. I don't really know that for certain. But it, you don't. You can't survive for weeks just by drinking. Because if I said you can't have food, but you can have something to drink, and you said yes, I'll survive, and then I gave you nothing but lager. There's water it's it's good calorie intake in lager. Anyway, what's more hydrating than people? Well, exactly. We're mostly water, as you said, so I'm sure I'd get plenty of uh, water. For, I'd, I'd wring out the flesh. Did you know you can starve to death by only eating celery? And rabbit. Just, and ra- eating, yes. ra- just eating rabbit is poisonous. Yep. There's not enough goodness in a rabbit. I, I think that... Why owls stay so skinny? When, I, I get, it was human blood or human flesh, wasn't it? Um... I didn't say so, but carry on. Oh, did I just jump to that conclusion? Oh, well, in that I think case... I, was trying, to, in that I case, think I was trying to insinuate it. Oh, OK. Well, we'll go along with that, because otherwise I eat flesh and muscle pretty much every day. And I don't think John drinks blood more than once a week. So <laughs> <laughs> it would be unfair. So we'll, we'll pretend that we're, we're... As long as I have to do killing, if I can just go to my friendly neighbourhood butcher, then... Yeah, flesh. I've always wondered what people taste like. It's just a natural curiosity as a carnivore. There's the... Who was it? Was it Jeffrey Dahmer or someone that said that people with tattoos taste worse? That's that's, that's good the, to know. That's the sole reason I've got tattoos. Unfortunately, John, you'd be delicious. I think John would be delicious. Anyway. I, look how lean he is. He's delicious. He, he's delicious inside and out. The, fir- the first bite is with your eyes. That is true. Yeah. If John was one of those sushi models that you get in, like, the Leary Le- Lecce men clubs, where they put, like, food and buffet on his naked body, 
I'm, I'd, I'd be worried that I wouldn't be able to stop and I'd just carry on just into his chest cavity. I think John might have something to say about it. Or for, for just above minimum wage, is he paid to sit there and shut up and let it happen? Well, I, I don't... Chop sticks through his nipples. Ooh. Pan fried nipples. Is, just so everyone listening knows, that isn't a sound effect I've put in for me laughing away at John's chest. No, the, the dog's following me in the kitchen and she's drinking as loud as physically possible. I think I think Hurricane Katrina was quieter than that. Yeah, probably. See, I think that what are the main benefits of eating flesh? Well, it's a good source of iron. But what's a better source of iron? iron. Drinking blood. Oh, oh good point. Uh, you get the all the benefits of eating flesh, but much more concentrated. All that hemoglobin is just filled with good iron nutrients. Are you saying blood is just a flesh smoothie? It's not. Not quite. I don't think quite, there's much but... protein. If you know the answer to today's uh, conundrum, send it on a stamped address envelope to Wood John Rather, PO Box, blah blah blah. Is flesh? No. What is blood a flesh smoothie? Yeah. We can only assume so. I wish I paid more attention in biology. It set me up for questions like this. <laughs> I mean, I just... I'd eat, I'd eat blood. I like black pudding. But I wouldn't drink blood. Uh, also, people are generally more tolerant, I'd say, of vampires than zombies i could i could feel you blindly feeling your way through that sentence <laughs> so why, generally why, why have you in, got to talk about the what doesn't exist why can't we not just discuss cannibals because cannibals are not accepted anywhere I yeah they're even less accepted they're less accepted than zombies yeah yeah oh okay that's a bit of a social faux pas there yeah, quite right. Fair enough. So at least zombies have an excuse. They're sort of... They've got some sort of what? virus in their brain that... Gives Why did them you eat that un- man? An unsatiable appetite for human flesh, whereas cannibals, well, they should just know better, shouldn't they? Vampires, though. You See, can have a, you've got to be you careful have a whole saying that, because your argument about cannibals is exactly the same as vegans and vegetarians' arguments to us. What's that? I don't remember listening to their arguments. I just politely ignore them. Stop well, yeah. getting angry. You, you don't get into an argument with a cannibal for long, I'd imagine. <laughs> no, he bites back. Yeah. Do you reckon cannibals look at themselves and think, oh, I'm delicious? Maybe. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't last long, would you? It'd, well, be, like you having, the, uh... it'd be like your last meal. Yeah, but if you woke, you up, if you woke ah! up as a gingerbread man, you know you'd be tempted. No, I don't like gingerbread. Okay, then. A jelly baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear about the cannibal who went on a self-catering holiday? Came back with no arms or legs. No, it cost him an arm and a leg. Oh. You got that so wrong. Right, whatever, ha- what, what, whatever happens, John has lost this round. <laughs> I know as, I the question, round. as the question asker, that we don't need to say it, but I felt like it needed to be said. <laughs> <laughs> all right we can chill out do i so just the flat yeah because i mean i grew up with a large family and i was banned from telling the kids when they were fed anything like pork or burgers that it wasn't chicken because for some reason they never put two and two together that chicken was chicken or they were okay with chicken being chicken one the two but if we explained that a burger was a cow or pork was a pig they wouldn't eat it and i feel the same with humans like Remember the whole, like, horse meat scandal? We're all eating horse. No one cared that it was horse. We cared that we were lied to. So if I just finished up a lasagna, and then you went, oh, by the way, that was Billy, to go, oh, Billy's delicious. Because, <laughs> no. I had, a, I, had a, I had a spag bowl once that contained, like, pheasant and partridge and wild turkey and stuff. It was it was weird, because it didn't have the right texture to be minced, but like, something's a little bit up with this. This isn't isn't beef, but I don't think it's corn. And we were told at the very end, we're like, oh, probably. Yeah, ob- obviously, if you were eating it and it tasted funny, you'd guess you were eating a clown. 
See, I think that. Oh wow, we're going to we're going to ignore that. I think think... to react. John was straight in there on the defense. (laughs) I was just bringing up a completely new point. I think drinking blood is more sustainable. See, if you, well, yeah, if you chop someone's arm off and cook it, probably won't grow back. Probably, Probably. but (laughs) unless it's some sort of lizard. All the evidence suggests that if I took a litre of your blood and drank it, you'll just grow a new litre of blood. But do you know what? That's how blood only works. Yeah, but yeah. What, what do we hear about blood donation all the time? There is a shortage of there blood. Enough of it. Um, there isn't enough of it. However, what do we hear about the population of the planet? We are overpopulated. So you would go thirsty before I would go hungry. Unless you like had a blood farm but the people that are overpopulated as well are chavs and chavs have tattoos and don't taste very good i think the bits i was going to give you i was going to give you the argument on that straight away cure overpopulation by eating people but the people that are going to be over in the place are going to be tattooed and pre-smoked not even hickory smoked like tobacco smoked yeah but we've got no proof that's one man's opinion and how do we know that he just didn't have a different palate to me Maybe I like my food with a bit of colour. Who knows? Hmm, okay. I'm just saying, I imagine blood from most animals probably tastes pretty similar. But as we know, the flesh from different animals tastes different. And it's all more out of curiosity. You didn't say how to always eat it, just once. (laughs) So I would, for science, I would gladly eat some of one of you. Well, as long as it's for science. Exactly. <laughs> I, I s- still think it would be unfair. I could I could drink your blood for science and you'd just have some more next month. I'm not going to get my arm back. You go, you're going for quantity over quality here, John. Yeah. Right, you've not looked after your body. You can't talk anything about quality of meat. Exactly. When was the last, time, when was the last time you exercised? But I wouldn't be. I exercise every day. I work in a manual field. A manual field. It's not right, but you know what I mean. But I wouldn't be eating myself anyway, which makes me the perfect person to be doing this. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go with the sustainability option and go for drinking blood. Why? But You're ridiculous. Because, well, vam- vampires are more socially, socially acceptable than cannibals, and even more so than zombies. I beg to differ. I think you've been taken over by the vampiric charm. Go go huff some bath salts and chew some people and see where that gets you. I don't need to huff bath salts to chew on people. Well, the last guy did. He probably wasn't the last guy. That was a long time ago that happened. I'm not ahead of anyone getting eaten since then. No, that's because cannibals, they might not necessarily be doing good for the world, but they do appreciate privacy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Okay, question number two. Wait. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up a second. Number one, I'm quite sure last year's Halloween episode included a question about King Blood. It just occurred to me, but I might be wrong. It was a Bloody Mary or a Witch's Brew. Okay. I do, I, it, it was a different question, but I was like, this was a bell. But also, number two, shut up. Shut up. But number three, we have to do a suggestion of the week. Just because it's Halloween, don't go all gung-ho, get excited. I was going to get some extra value and get four questions because that's the sort of kind sharing guy I am. Four questions? What if we both win two? Then I'd have to go judge's rule and probably declare John the winner. Oh, okay. What? (laughs) I do it because you hate it. Um, Well, I can do suggestion of the week now if you want. Well, I didn't know you were going to ask four questions. Let's keep it on the down low to see if I could get away with it. Just uh, to reiterate, Nothing is planned. <laughs> this podcast is fo- is filmed in front of a live studio audience. That involves my dog and your cats. No, I, I lock the cats out of the room because otherwise they come and crawl over the keyboard. Oh, typical cat behaviour. Right, OK. Would you rather live in a zombie apocalypse or an alien invasion? Alien invasion? Definitely. OK. Oh, sorry, you, you, want, you want a reason? Yeah, yeah, this is the bit where you justify your existence. Oh, okay. That's well, why you're alien is basically just someone from not where you're from. 
So I'm not going to be cheating and go, oh, well, technically an alien, someone from another country comes over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But they might come in peace. They might come to help advance our technology. They might. Not come... if they're invading. They probably, yeah, they probably won't. Yeah, they probably won't. But we know for a fact that zombies. And we all know people are pretty shit, so. And have you, have, you ever, have you ever played poker with someone who has no idea how to play poker? Um, yes, I'm the, normally the person that has no idea. Yeah, and the people who have no idea how to play poker are much, much, much harder to play against because you can't predict their moves because they're not playing how you're supposed to play. So <laughs> fighting fighting an intelligent life form, we'd stand a chance. Fighting a non-intelligent, <laughs> primitive, instinct-driven life form would be difficult. You can predict their behaviour to a certain degree, but there's no intelligence behind that. It's like arguing with a toddler or wrestling with a oh, pig in oh. the mud. Sorry, I thought you were saying that the aliens would have a very hard time fighting with us because we're all spastics and lower life forms. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's no proof that they're going to be more intelligent than us. They might. Well, they, they would be they'd if they've they reached us. Trouble. If they well, reached us before we reached them, then they're probably more. If not, they may not be more intelligent per se, but they're certainly more advanced. They might literally only be more advanced than travel. They might not have <laughs> weaponry. They might not have empathy. We might be able to baffle them with sarcasm. War of the Worlds, Common Cold. See you later, fuckwads. I thought you said sarcasm, War of the Worlds. I was like, I don't remember sarcasm winning the World of the Worlds. No, but if it's if it's something that is completely unimaginable to us, how do we not know that we would confuse them with sarcasm so much that it would... We, I've, I've met people that you use sarcasm to and it makes their brains explode, let alone like another alien life form. You mean Americans, right? No, actually, Americans do get sarcasm. The yeah. first, but the first person I met in the states when I lived there, she was one of the most sarcastic people I've ever met. It was fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I would. You know what it's like to argue with someone intelligent versus arguing with someone who's an idiot, and you never win an argument with an idiot, because to win an argument, the other person has to concede and agree with you. You can't win an argument just by, as John likes to do, by refusing to agree with anything they say and declaring yourself the winner. You can do that with a zombie. You can declare yourself the winner once you've driven a spike through its head. Yeah, but it was a metaphor, another thing that John doesn't like, because we're talking about an argument versus like a fight, because it would be a fight with, with zombies. And that's, as with your last question, quantity over quality. So how are you going to win um, uh, an ethical debate against an alien who's got some sort of laser cannon who's disintegrating your family and friends? How that proves that he's got a laser cannon? <laughs> he's a fucking alien. He's so? invading. It's what they carry. How do you know he's not like Alf or E.T.? Because it doesn't make for a particularly good spooky episode if there's no peril involved. I never said there wasn't just gonna run out, Just going to run out of cheesy Doritos because Alf's turned up. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, he eats cats, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah no, imagine Alf is going to come around and he's going to eat your fucking cat. I'll punch him. Square in Where? the neck. Okay. Who's to say that, you know, the neck is the most invulnerable part of the alien? Then he's going to eat you for attacking him. But we don't. John, talk this to me about what... zombies. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this, this isn't the Matt and John show. Well, I was doing what I do during a zombie apocalypse and just keep quiet and down low and out the way. Sit in the corner and giggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is about a zombie apocalypse is we all know exactly how it would play out. And therefore, we can prepare. Everybody, and I know both of you, for certain, have a zombie escape plan. Do you have an alien escape plan? No, you don't. You haven't prepared one because we don't know how to prepare for it. There's no... You could you could have come up with the best ideas, think it's going to work, but there's just there's too much uncertainty. You might try and attack them with our best weapons, nuclear weapons maybe, and it turns out that uranium is just like their sweets. They love eating uranium. And then we're stuffed. That's that was your that was your answer to the alien invasion. Whereas zombies, we know we know we know how to deal with them. Yeah, it'll be shit for a while, but yeah. In every simulation that they've ran, because they have run simulations about a zombie outbreak the, the populace is gone that's that's inevitable however i would argue with you 
So, do you agree there are definitely people on this planet? We've discussed it before with, you know, all like health and safety. But there's definitely people on this planet that probably shouldn't exist. It would be better for the human race if they just weren't, like, if they're not intelligent enough to warrant their existence. If the alien life forms are that much more intelligent, than survival of the fittest, I say. So you think that the aliens are the fittest and they should just wipe us out? Only if they are the fittest. And if they are, then they should be the species continue. But if they're not, then we prevail, we get their technology, and then we can go Deep Space Nine and start trying to colonise the universe with Elon Musk at the helm. And Pat- Patrick Stewart's there just for aesthetics. Like you said, we know, support. we know exactly what would happen with a zombie apocalypse. But with the aliens, we don't. And I'd take hope over a certain doom any day of the week. Mm. I don't plan to fail with my zombie plan. No, but statistically, everything points to you will. <laughs> statistically, shut up. We, we've discussed but the whole zombie thing. Me. We've discussed the whole zombie thing before. You have a young child, and I know. Yes, who I, I sacrifice for the greater good. <laughs> but don't make me go through this again. Don't make me seem like a terrible <laughs> parent. John wins. Dick. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll hear the rest of your argument. As long as you stop throwing under the fucking bus. What I was gonna say was, I know you're a good person, and despite the logical thing is, yeah, see you later, kids. In realistically the first thing you would do is go and try and save him. And the last thing you want during a zombie apocalypse is a child running around. They're not useful, they can't carry as many logs, they're loud. They're loud. Children are loud. We'd learn more from a zombie, uh, from an alien invasion than a zombie apocalypse. We might. We might, yeah, but that's what I said, hope over certain doom. And I'd like to think that the zombie, the uh, alien apocalypse would be very similar to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where they're not interested in us. They just need to destroy our planet for a space highway. <laughs> Killed by bureaucracy. Yeah. I can see Have that happening. Tower, Sorry, John, what did you say? I was going to say, I could see that happening. I just asked Matt if he had his towel at the ready. Oh, I've always got a towel. Where is it? It's next to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm not practicing what you preach, but obviously you've got it. So how can I ever say that you didn't? Exactly. So I'd, I'd be fine in the alien apocalypse. And more importantly, if we found out there was other life force, we'd probably just vote to leave the, uh, I don't know what the grouping of planets, the universe, the star system, the galactic Solar federation, system. whatever it would be called. Anyway. We can't, we can't even leave a group of other I can't, we can't even leave a group of other countries that we're not even attached to because we're an island. What? Yeah, but, what? Uh, we got? but I've, I've figured this out. So we've voted to leave and we keep putting off leaving because they want to save face. So we're just going to keep pretending to leave. So the people who want to leave, are, we're doing what they want, but we're never actually going to leave because it's the wrong thing to do. And that's just going to be it forever until the sun implodes. Right. I think the uh, um, this uh, this argument all might boil down to John's zombie plan. Or whether you'd rather be eaten alive or let's say they have got space lasers and it is worst case, just disintegrated. No, uh, disintegrating isn't too bad. Exactly. Like like the uh, Mars attacks lasers. The, la- the last thing you see is meh. Doop. That's not a bad way to go. John, any... And they come back to swift and painless? Uh, long and no. drawn out. <laughs> I think alien, alien Invasion wins, much to my uh, own disbelief. Plus, you did go against eating flesh in the last question, so you couldn't really go for zombies. No, that that's been, that true, would, yeah. That would have been a contradiction, and we've never contradicted ourselves on this podcast. It's, it's rule one. <laughs> never, ever. Okay, uh, recommendation of the week? is spooky food. It's the season where you get everything. everything's green or everything's black, and why not go for it? Because Christmas stuff uh, is available mostly around. You can make mince pies because there's always mince meat on the shelves. Hot cross buns. I bought hot cross buns this week because that's what my boy wanted to eat for lunch. He's been so, listening to our podcast. What a lad. Yes, hot cross buns. 
why not? Um, yeah, so I think most of the things you want to eat that are seasonal are available all year round, apart from spooky food. We had some spooky donuts at work with green centres. There were pineapple and raspberry flavours. I didn't manage to get one. But yeah, spooky food. Make the most of it while it's here. I nearly bought the other day, what was it? Mr. Kipling were doing French freakies or something like that, which were basically French fancy. But one of them was lime flavour, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I'd have been up for that. Lauren got some um, black Fanta. She was very excited about blood orange flavour. She, oh, said it was, she said it was awful. <laughs> so oh. she took it to work. But no, yeah, considering this is a lead on from last week's suggestion, a week of festive food, once again, my uh, suggestion of the week to follow on from yours, John, stock up. Stock okay, up. I was overindulge. Just go Sorry? I was just going to go diversity. Find all the spooky food you can. Try, try one of everything. Oh, yeah. But both, and then, then you can stock up afterwards on the stuff you do like that isn't Black Panther. And then what your favourite one is, stock up, overindulge until you hate it. And by the time it's available again next year, you'll be <sighs> ready You'll be ready to eat it or drink it again. Rather than going, oh, that was really nice. Oh, I can't have it for another year. Like what you do when you go to a buffet. Everyone does this when they go to a buffet, or at least they should. You go up, you get a little bit of everything. Try every single thing. You then find your favourite thing. And then you go back up and have a whole plate of just that. Because why eat something that's second or third favourite when you can just have all of your favourite? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather sacrifice a goat to Satan or perform an exorcism? Mm, I'm I'm, I'm going to sacrifice the goat. I do feel bad, but if John wanted to pick first, he needs to be quicker. But I'm going to pick the goat just because I'm not a fan of exercise. See, I'd rather perform an exorcism because I think sacrificing a goat to Satan is a waste of perfectly good goat. What? Why? Why are you waiting? Wasting good curried goat? I I would. I mean, it's not curried yet. It is just goat. It's potential curried goat. I I admit, but I would argue simply the same thing of why are you wasting a perfectly good demon? Well. You don't kill the demon, you just expunge it from a person. The material plane. Well, yeah, but that's what we're doing with the goat. No, you're giving it to the devil. You're not physically giving it to the devil. Well, you, you are and you aren't. With like sacrifices, you can't then go and eat it because then there's no sacrifice involved. The sacrifice is you saying, look, this goat is all for you, not for me. I will not consume it. That's why it's called a sacrifice. Yeah. But why why would you not befriend the demon, get him to work for you or work with you, and then... It isn't Dungeons and fucking Dragons, Mark. It doesn't... All right. So it's not medieval times. I I can't remember the last time I saw anyone sacrifice a goat. There's a whole film based around exorcism. Lots of films based around exorcism. Look, if you befriend a demon, how do you know that it's not a demon with in a different demon's suit on if you sacrifice a goat how do you not know that there wasn't a demon inside that goat that you needed to get rid of what, right what one of you i think watched this week's episode of the good place with demons and other demon suit and the other one i i don't know about this demon goat russian doll situation i mean i don't think i watched this week's episode of good place actually oh sorry for, sorry for spoiling it for you but i mean What's so wrong about sacrificing a goat? We kill plenty of animals every single day. They're not for sacrificial purposes. Why would why would you sacrifice it? Well, maybe because I'm trying to get on Satan's good side. Why? Well, because I'm probably going to hell. He, Matt, yeah, I think you're right on that one, John. He's he's got a pretty good argument there. Can you get on the devil's good side? Of course you can. Have you not seen he South just... Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to pull a Saddam Hussein and make love to the devil. I think we'd okay. get on well. He's the devil. He loves metal. However... I can say to too. Definitely. But I think he'd just play the bit before anyone sings on a loop. Which is basically a tool song, to be fair, but... 
it, the, 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 the other half is the bit where he sings and then it is and repeats. Um, depending on what version of the devil you believe in, however, would a goat sacrifice be really wants? Because in certain things he's like half goat. Not like, yeah, Mr. So, not like Mr. So, Tumnus, but... So what you're saying is you're going to sacrifice a goat to him and he's going to be displeased. Hey, I'm just going with what I saw in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I never saw Buffy the Vampire. Wasn't allowed to watch it. Was told it would give me nightmares. <laughs> Hardly. To be fair, Mars attacks gave me nightmares, so might have been justified. Oh, okay. To run into a soft lad, but carry on. Well, no, I watched Mars attacks when I was like ten. I wasn't allowed to watch Buffy when I was fourteen, so a bit different. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. What's so good about exercising a demon? They don't bother you at 10 o'clock wanting to go out again. Oh, no, that's dogs. So there's nothing good about exercising demons. Yeah, John, I don't feel like John's heart's in it tonight. There, there's plenty of good things about exercising demons. Did you have to Google it first? No. I think we need to stop letting John eat before the podcast because then he's not going to not get any sense of urgency to get it over <laughs> and done with. <laughs> You've got to starve him to get the best performance. Yeah. You want you hungry for the podcast. Well, Matt said that he didn't like exercise. Well, I think that exercise is good. It keeps the blood pumping. And so is that, why you, it, cy- is that why you cycle to work? And then there will be a good blood flow and then I can drink more. Is that so how- going back to 18th century uh, law. Yeah, you don't end up with any ghosts in your blood. I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exercise a demon. You're just going to attack. I'm trying to get on the right side of the bad people so we can begin a discourse and maybe start to discuss what's really wrong. Whereas by exercising the demon, you're just creating that boundary even bigger. <laughs> and when, when you actually read things like the Satanic Bible, none of it's actually evil. A lot of their rules is just generally like. Don't be a dick. Respect each other. There's none of this, oh, you're not allowed shrimp and whatever else there are in religions, which I can't think of any examples because I'd rather... Can't work on a Sunday. Don't eat pork. Don't have sex with your neighbour's wife. Don't steal from your neighbour. La, la, la. Don't kill people. Pretty sure all religions say that. Yeah? All those... Just a neighbour view. Very Satanist. It's just very much, you know, just be cool. Yes, I'm. I'm sure that's exactly what Satanists are remembered for. They've just Being got bad PR. Kid. Pretty much. I mean, have either of you two read the Satanic Bible? Have you? My partner has, and she's told me about it. So, you're just. So your second-hand it. information beats my zero-hand information. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> One's better than zero, no matter which way you slice it. It's two's better than zero. Unless you divide him by zero. Just let that go out there for a little bit. And also, goat, goats are ten a penny. Like, how often do you come across a demon? About as often as I come across a goat. Really? No, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. I was at a farm yesterday and I saw three goats. How short is your memory span? I put everything to the podcast. I have no, no long-term memory. No. All I live for is the moment. But more more importantly, how more how recently did you think you saw a demon? Um, Saturday morning. Oh, okay. Although, to be honest, it could have been a Hellcat. If there's any Mopar fans out there, all the catch my drift. You lost me. Don't know about John, but it's a particular model of car. Oh. Sorry, that was lame. So, any. Any other exorcism benefits? Uh, don't you have to perform an exorcism in Latin or something? I think it'd be great to learn Latin. Uh, most, a lot of our language has got Latin roots, and and that's shared sort of across the European continent. So, I think if I could learn Latin fluently enough to perform an exorcism, I could become quite adept at speaking to other cultures 
No, bullshit, because you'd learn the chant that you needed to learn, but that wouldn't teach you Latin, that'd teach you the words you need to learn. I know all the words to Dragon Stayed in Tay by Ozone, but I'm not fluent in Romanian. <laughs> Well, I I I would make sure that I knew good Latin. Oh, as opposed to not bad, bad Latin. Latin. Bad Latin. So yeah. yeah, so I could adapt depending on what the, the what the demon was doing. If the demon was sort of reacting badly to that particular set of exorcisms, then I'd change it up. But you can't do that unless you you know the ground rules. It's, you're starting to make it sound like you've never actually performed an exorcism. No, I haven't. No, I, I don't think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't think it does either. No, whereas I know at least 12 ways of how to kill a goat. Which you're just going to waste. Yeah, but it's fine because it's biodegradable. Leave me alone. Why don't you go after these big companies that keep using bubble wrap and are still producing single-use plastic containers for things. I can't eat bubble wrap. So? Can eat curried goat. The one-use disposable plastic items are killing more livestock than the one that goat that I'm killing for. Biodegradable, use it on compost, make some vegetables, use the vegetables to feed some other animals, boom, now I've got ten goats. If I happen to sacrifice a goat to Satan on an allotment, that's not my fault. How do you know that Lucifer isn't into gardening? He might be very proud of his prized 12-foot courgette. The, uh, the fourth circle of hell is uh, solely orchards. Yeah. Full, full of slightly under and slightly overripe fruit. I'm just saying, I know a lot more about sacrificing animals to Satan than you do about performing an exorcism. So I don't think you're an expert on it. And quite frankly... I'm going to have to give this one to Matt because at no point, John, have you said it would free someone of a crippling demon that would be infesting their body, which is the main reason people have exorcisms. Stop other people from crawling around the ceiling and chanting in Latin and putting curses on people. Yeah, but to be fair, you did throw him off because you mentioned wasting food, and even though he has just had dinner, he would probably have preferred to have had curried goat. Yeah, and I did also describe him with the suggestion of the week being food-related again. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm going to give it to you, Matt, because uh, John could have said uh, one one line and I would have given it to him. Thank you. Which is, piss off, ghost. <laughs> piss off, ghost. And in uh, Latin, it's uh, defractuous urina off exprivet. There you go. Learn something new every day. Amazing. Piss off, ghost in Latin. <laughs> Do you want one more? I've got one if you, if you want it. I'll make it a quick one. I'd like one more if John's going to bring his A game. Well, did you have porridge for dinner or something? I had pasta squash and asparagus and pea katsu curry. So there was no meat in it? No. Well, fuck you telling me off about wasting a goat. You just wasted a meal. <laughs> oh. You okay. didn't. A all of it. Yeah, but that, you're telling me that wouldn't have been improved by some peacock talking about peacocks would you rather walk around an abandoned and haunted stately home or hospital oh it depends what the purpose of the walk around was Uh, your car's broken down and you're going to go find help I need to find a telephone yep I'll let John take it because I'm unsure so would I rather walk around an abandoned stately home or a abandoned hospital. Yeah, of which are haunted. It's a good question. I think compounds oh. will get you everywhere. So it's abandoned and haunted. Yep. So wait, why why are we why are we going in there to get help if it's abandoned? Because you've broken down at the side of the road and that's the only building you can see. Oh, so we don't know it's abandoned. No. Ah. Oh. Well, in that case, I choose the hospital. Oh, I'm glad I was leaning towards the stately home, to be honest. I think walking around an abandoned hospital, yes, it might be haunted. Yes, it's been abandoned, so there's no one in there to help you. But I think there'd be more useful things in there that you could actually use to help someone, like antibiotics, 
Uh, Your car's broken down. Like, how long has it been broken down for? You need antibiotics. Bandages. So, so long that it got rusty and you got tetanus from trying to fix it. Yeah, there you, you go. You, your best thing would be the uh, defibrillator to restart the battery. It was like, clear. Yep, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you could use an x-ray machine to work out what was wrong with the car. Or what what bones were broken in your passenger's hand. Uh Oh, so you've got a passenger in this scenario. Well, maybe. And how did they break their they hands? They stayed in the car. They stayed in the car. But how did they break their hand? Uh, they put it through the windscreen. Oh, so your car didn't break down. You crashed. <laughs> no, they. The passenger caused the car to break down by punching through the windscreen, through the engine block, and now I've got to treat their wounds. Right. So your passengers Thor. No. Who else could punch through an engine block? I don't know. My passenger. Do they at least get a name? No. Oh. (laughs) 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 Well, I would say what you really want in this helpful in this scenario, if you've broken down, you need a phone. Now, I'm assuming that we don't either our mobile phone is dead or we don't have one. So nowadays, generally, to use a phone, you need electricity. Now, if both these buildings are abandoned, What's more likely to still have electricity going for it? Hospital. hospital. No, because if a hospital was shut down, I'm pretty sure the electric company would be straight on it. White on rice. Yeah, but they, hospitals also have uh, their own generators in they case do. of power so, cuts. Do you know how to start a backup generator in a hospital? Yeah. You throw oh. a big red switch like it shows you on all movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you, so you'd know where it is, you'd be able to get to it, start it back up. Or do you think it's more likely that this stately home just still has some electricity, like every film? What Power companies can't turn off electricity. I think that's a myth. Of course they can. How? They turn it off. You're thinking if you don't pay your electricity bills, they just keep giving you electricity for free. Well, they don't. They can't cut you off, I know that much. Do you have any proof? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Saying yes to that question isn't proof, John. <laughs> well, I can't I can't show you my proof on a podcast, can I? You could describe it. All right. It's the benefit of an audio versus visual format. We can use our imagination. Spin me a rhubarb. My proof is that they're not allowed. Oh, OK, cool. So how would you find yourself getting around this hospital with... Wait... I said, you just argued for me. You're telling me that they couldn't shut off the electricity for my stately home, which would be a house. They can't just shut off electricity for a house. You've just said that. Pretty sure they could cut off electricity to an abandoned hospital. Not if it's got a generator. Yeah, but now you've entered the hospital. You've now got to walk around a haunted, dark, empty hospital by yourself after your passenger on a nice drive around has punched through the entire front half of the car find the generator, start the generator, and then find a phone. Whereas I walk into Stately Home that hasn't had its electricity cut, but apparently they can't just do that from your own words. Pick up the phone and phone some and say, yeah, need a green flag. No, hospitals wouldn't be dark. They've got lots of windows. It's night time, surely. This is always night time. This is Halloween. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a full moon out. It's Halloween. To say it's but Halloween. It is Halloween. There might be a full moon, but definitely me walking into the house and in every stately home, the phone is in reception because the butler has to answer it. Oh, the, the phone line's that... definitely cut off. What? Oh, so they, they can't cut off electricity, but they can cut the phone line. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, because it's twice, I'm going to need proof of one of them. Well, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure you've had your phone cut off because you didn't pay the bill once. When? I can't remember. I've never never had a landline. No, your mobile. Ah. Yeah, but we're not talking about a mobile. Because we don't have a mobile on us. Otherwise, why would... There is no reception. I'm just saying if they can cut off a mobile, then they can cut off a landline, can't they? Okay, my phone runs out of battery. That doesn't mean that my house does too. It could if it was one of those wireless handsets. (laughs) One of those wireless houses. Look, just stop questioning everything I say. Just accept what I say and accept the limitations that provides you. 
oh, okay, John wins. No. <laughs> it's not how it works. <laughs> you're, just, you're just trying to, to mean me. Yeah. Well, that's not very nice. You've brought no proof. You said you want to go walk around an abandoned, empty hospital. Either way, yeah, was, you've I've got, got all the bandages. They've got all the bandages that my passenger needs. OK, but it's not going to help you get your car up and running. I don't care about the car. Cars are bad for the environment. Then why were you driving in the first place? I wasn't. Who was driving? It's a ghost. <gasps> OK. Are you in? Wait. In this story, are you a Ghostbuster and Slime was <laughs> driving? Wait, in this story, is John even there? Is he even alive? Oh my god, is he Bruce Willis in the sixth sense? John, are you Bruce Willis? I don't know, I don't make the rules. If you'd have said yes, I'd have fucking given you the win. Yes. Too late. Too late. late. Now. I'm, Too Bruce late now. I'm, Matt wins. I'm Bruce Willis. Matt wins! Yeah! <laughs> Fun fact Bruce Willis, a bit like. You, Damn but it. with more hair. No, I forgot his name. Ross Kemp. Ross Kemp. My, my brain just on repeat just went Grant Mitchell, Grant Mitchell, Grant Mitchell. It's not Grant Mitchell. It went David Tennant. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, not David Tennant. Ah. Right, that's 3 1, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Piss off, ghost. Apparently, John's a ghost. <laughs> No, John's not a ghost. He's not a ghost. No, but he no, wasn't. He no, wasn't driving. He just apparated to a car. So John's a transformer. Oh, that's what it was, and that's why he was adamant that he knew where the generator was. He could sense it using his spidey sense or something. Yeah, or bumblebee sense, because he's a transformer. Anyway, thank you for listening. Have a spooky Halloween, and we'll see you next week. When it's time for the second worst holiday of the year, bonfire night. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the overly long countdown to Christmas. No, we got to get uh, Guy Fawkes out of the way first. But we've all... Oh, okay. But what I should have done was go, yeah. These two have been John. Happy Halloween. Because I've infected one of you. Great. And it's not the one you think it is. Nothing eats up it. Will somebody do it? Will everybody go?